All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to talk to you about a very deep result in linear algebra. Because in linear algebra, you study two things. On the one hand, you have linear transformations, which are very dynamic and abstract things. On the other hand, you have matrices, which are just concrete tables of numbers, which you usually study in basic linear algebra. And the whole point of advanced linear algebra is to show that they're kind of the same. And I think the best illustration of that is with the concept of invertibility. And for this, let me talk, let me define invertibility of a linear transformation and invertibility of a matrix. So definition, if you have two vector spaces V and W, and t, a linear transformation between them, then t is invertible if there's a linear transformation that undoes whatever damage t does. If there exists, exists u, and u is more uh, also known as t inverse from w to v, such that ut is the identity, and here it's really the identity in v, because the input of t is in v, and tu is the identity of w. So maybe in terms of a picture, if this is v, and this is w, and we have t, and you think of t as a direct flight, then t u, or t inverse, is the return flight. And no, um, this has no relationship with the University of Texas, UT. This has no relationship with TU Wien, okay, Technical University of Vienna. So that's one thing. We just have, if you want, the inverse of a function, and you can show that there's an inverse if and only if t is one-to-one -one and onto, and that I have done in another video. On the other hand, we have the world of matrices. So definition, if you have a square matrix, and there's another video showing square invertible matrices must be square, so if A is an n by n matrix, then A is invertible if there's a matrix B that also undoes whatever A does. If there is B, a n by n matrix B such that A, B, equals b a equals the identity the n by n identity matrix and just as a quick illustration if you have a b let's say one two one three and let's say b is three one minus two minus one then you can check that a b equals b a equals the identity and by the way, this B is also known as A inverse. Okay, so we have those two things. And you have to understand, they're two very different concepts. On the one hand, we have this dynamic duo T and U, which undo everything. On the other hand, we have those two tables, such as if you multiply them, then you get the identity. What I want to show you is, in fact, they're just two different sides of the same coin. In other words, if you take the matrix of T inverse, okay, so if you take this matrix of U, then it turns out it's the inverse of the matrix of T. In other words, the matrix of T inverse, again, the matrix of this, uh, dynamic thing that undoes t is just the make the inverse of this list of numbers of the matrix of t 
And so let me write that down more precisely. So, and that's what I'm going to show today, the URL. So, again, let V and W be vector spaces, finite dimensional, and let T be from V to W be a linear transformation. And let's fix some bases. So, beta, which is V1 up to Vn, be a basis of V. And we'll assume that uh, um, W also has n vectors, so, so W1 up to Wn, be a basis of W. And that's because if we have an invertible mate, if T is invertible, then it turns out V and W have to have the same dimension. So suppose this is true, and let A be the matrix of T. Be this thing, T from beta to gamma. That's the matrix of T. Then it turns out this linear transformation is invertible if and only if this matrix is invertible which again relates this dynamic thing to this static thing, if you want. Then, first of all, T is invertible, which by the way, it's usually very hard to check. You have to check, you know, it's one to one, on to, and everything. This is easy to check, if and only if A is invertible. Just have to calculate the determinant and show it's non-zero. Unless you're my student, don't we haven't done determinants yet. Uh, and moreover, what's even more interesting is the matrix. In either case, the matrix of T inverse is just A inverse. So if you take the matrix of T inverse and you switch it from gamma to beta, because it goes from W to V equals to A inverse. In other words, if you take the matrix of T inverse, it's the matrix of T inverse. And in another video, I will show you a really cool application of that where you can actually calculate T inverse uh, by just calculating inverse of matrices. So, because also in practice, T inverse is hella hard to find, but this matrix, inverse of the matrix, is. Um, easy to find. All right, and what's interesting is also the proof. That's why I want to prove this. So, I can write this down if necessary. And what I will show is both directions, and in either case, I will show that this result two holds. So I'll sort of uh, kill two birds with one stone. All right, so first of all, suppose T is invertible. Let's show A is invertible. So suppose T is invertible. What this means is that there is a linear transformation U which undoes whatever T does. So there is U, sometimes called T inverse, from W to V, such that uh, UT is the identity on V, and TU is the identity on W. And what we want to show is that there's a matrix B that undoes whatever A does. So show A is invertible. That is, there is B with AB equals BA equals the identity 
Well, the only choice we really have for a matrix is to choose B to be the matrix of U, which is T inverse. So let B be the matrix of U, this time from beta to gamma to beta, and all we need to show is that AB equals BA equals the identity. I have to remind you that it's the matrix of T inverse from gamma to beta, but this is really cool. It just follows from matrix multiplication. Then A, B, A is the matrix of T, B is the matrix of T inverse, or if, if the matrix of U. We don't know if T inverse, well, we do know if T inverse exists. Uh, so we have this uh, that goes from, yeah, gamma to beta. Because notice those, those uh, almost like integration, the diagonal things cancel out. And then by definition of matrix multiplication, the um, product of two matrices is the matrix of the composition, Tu from gamma to gamma. But we know that Tu is the identity on W. And the matrix of the identity function is the identity matrix. So indeed, AB is the identity, and similarly, using UT is the identity, you show uh, BA is the identity. I mean, look how beautiful linear algebra is. It just flows like butter, okay? And so what have we shown? A, B is the identity, B, A is the identity, and therefore A is invertible. I forgot to mention, well, if T is invertible, the dimensions are the same, so A is indeed an N by N matrix, and B is an N by N matrix. So this works, uh, so um, A is invertible. And moreover, what is A inverse? On the one hand, a inverse is A inverse, and that's the matrix of T from beta to gamma inverse. But also, well, we just shown that A inverse is B, but what was B is the matrix of U, and U is just T inverse. So indeed, we have just shown that the matrix of T inverse is the matrix of T inverse. That takes care of, sadly, the easy direction. So there is a um, harder direction coming. Okay, now let's show the harder direction. So suppose we know there is a matrix which undoes A Somehow, we have to craft a linear transformation which undoes T. So, what, which one is this? So, suppose, so suppose A is invertible. So, there is B with AB equals BA is the identity and show uh, T inverse, uh, show, show T is invertible. Which means there is U, U uh, linear transformation such that UT is the identity on V and TU is the identity on W. Okay, and here's the idea. The idea is um, we would like to define U such that the matrix of U is B. Because then, for if U is T inverse, we would get that the matrix of T inverse is B, which is A inverse, which is the inverse of the matrix of T. So here's the idea, and again, it's not technically part of the proof. This is what will help us prove this. So idea, define U 
such that the matrix of u from gamma to beta is B. Because you see, we're given the matrix B, but we need to construct U. What does that mean in terms of matrices? That means the matrix B, which again has entries, B, I, J. If we want this to be the matrix of U, it means that if you evaluate U at the basis vectors of gamma, so U, W, 1, dot, 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 U, W, J, dot, 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 U, W, N, if you evaluate U at the basis vectors of gamma and write your result in terms of the vectors in beta, which are V1 up to Vn, Vn, and maybe this is Vi, then basically the ith component of Uwj has to be this Bij. And this is just by the definition of a matrix. The definition of a matrix is if you evaluate your linear transformation at the jth basis vector and you write this in terms of your output vectors, then the ith entry should be the entry of your matrix. All right, this is how heuristically how to define it, but now let's actually do this. So now define u from w to v such that u of wj equals to, you write it in terms of the vi with the components of your matrix, which really means the sum from 1 to n of vij and uh, vi. By the way, why are we summing over i? Because here we have a j, here we have a j. So in order, so basically we have to sum over i to make the i's disappear because we have a j here and we have a j here. So anything else just disappears. Um, because just like in integration, right? If you have a constant on the left hand side and an f of x on the right hand side, you have to integrate f with respect to x because you don't want x's anymore. All right, so I'm saying, well, define u by this formula. The problem is though, if you want to define a linear transformation, you have to define it for every value in W. Turns out, no. Remember, to define a linear transformation, it's enough to define it at the basis vectors, which means just by saying uwj equals to something, magically, this defines u. So in other words, uh, u exists because uh, what's called uh, u is a basis because uh, w1 up to wj or w1 up to wn is a basis of w and this follows from what I call the linear extension theorem and there's a video on this so by the linear extension theorem So it turns out this is actually enough. And then all we need to show is that indeed ut is the identity and tu is the identity. So now that we have our candidate for a linear transformation, let's show that it's actually an inverse. Well, let's see. First of all, what is the matrix of U? By definition, the matrix of U is B. This is the whole point of doing this. So by construction, the matrix of U from gamma to beta is precisely B, which is A inverse. 
And then to show ut is the identity, let's just calculate the matrix of ut. Then ut from beta to beta. So from beta to, uh, yeah, no, beta to beta. The input is in V, the output is in V. Well, by definition, again, of matrix multiplication, this is U from gamma to beta times T from beta to gamma. Okay, those cancel out. But then, by definition or by construction, this is B, this is A, but by assumption, Remember, this is the identity. But what is the identity? It's just the matrix of the identity transformation. And you see, because those two matrices are the same, it turns out the linear transformations have to be the same as well. So what follows is that indeed, ut is the identity. So you see this interplay between linear transformations and matrices, very important. And similarly, you can show that TU is the identity. And therefore, what have we shown? So T is invertible. And you know, if you want, uh, U is the inverse of T. Lastly, all we need to show is that the matrix of T inverse is the matrix of T inverse, but that's not too bad. The matrix of T inverse from gamma to beta, well, that's the matrix of U from um, gamma to beta. And by construction, the matrix of U is B. By definition, B is A inverse, but that's A inverse. And remember, A was the matrix of T from beta to gamma and then inverse. Ta-da! So indeed, now you can go home and sleep well because now you know that the matrix of T inverse is the matrix of T inverse. So I hope you like this little linear algebra excursion. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel.